Welcome back to GMT. I am Adana Kambi and I am your host this morning. And we're continuing with the program. Remember to share the live, share the live, share the live before we get into it. It's a beautiful day in Tobago. And today we have um, in our studio one of our friends, no stranger to the Tobago Updates um, uh, stage channel, rather, no, no stranger to GMT. Um, and we have the person of Sergeant Joseph Jordan of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. And he is here. Of course, you know, the conversations we have when Sergeant is here with us. So we're just going to do a little update of, you know, what's been happening in Tobago over the past week. All right. Good morning to you. Good morning to Trinidad and Tobago, your viewing and listening audience. All right. So that's our usual updates. So the statistics as it relates to Tobago, as we're going to compare our January 1st, 2022, up to May 27th. So in 2022, we'd have recorded 200 and, sorry, 332 serious report crimes, whilst in 2023, we have recorded 251, which would have shown a 24% decrease in, as relates to SRCs. Our detection rate stands at 28%. All right, so and the, main, the main contributors to these serious report crimes is general larceny, sexual offenses, <clears throat> and breaking offenses. And I, and I want to zero in a little bit on the breaking offenses and the general larceny. Now, what we, are, what we are still encountering is the fact that although we are asking persons to secure their homes, we still find in situations where persons are leaving their brush cutter in the garage, in the gallery, and it going missing. And of course, they're coming to make a report, which they are entitled to. However, it is in your place. Because you know the average person by the time yard. Yes. <laughs> but because of our society has changed a lot, and we cannot just leave things lying around because it are people that they work when they day come here. Eh? Whether oh. we like it or not, them going around to see what they can steal and to sell. And we have to make things diff more difficult for them. So we, we basically you don't want to be, you, wanna be, you don't want to be a soft target. So that is one of the things that we are having as it relates to general larceny. Brush cutters, sometimes persons leave little tools in their yard. They come back home, it's missing. And it continues to, to, to plague us. And... We haven't that challenge in, a, in most of our station districts, right? So we still want to encourage people, security cameras, lighting, all these things are going to aid in, as it relates to protecting your home and your property, right? As it relates to murders, so we would have recorded six murders for the year thus far. Um, we beg that we don't have any more. As compared to last year, for the same period, uh, we would have recorded, I think, three murders during this period. All right? So basically, we've seen almost a 100% increase in murders. And these, are, these figures, six murders may not be a large number, but the, la the loss of one life is quite significant. And many of these um, murders that we would have encountered for the year are drug-related and the choice of weapon and firearms, or is the firearm rather. So we need, to, we need to be mindful as to what is taking place in our country. Um, Tobago is no longer this quiet place, and we must be aware of our influence from our Trinidad environment. And, and, and it's not a situation where we are blaming Trinidad. However, we must remember that we are a twin island state and there is an exchange of culture and values between these two islands and that is something that we should not ever forget. Right? So, as you listen to the murders, we, are, we have two of them solved. We are working on the others. More than likely, they will be solved in the very near future. We want to encourage the, pub, the public to continue to provide us with that information. If you must find somebody you can trust, outside of that, we have the 555, we have the 800 tips continue to use them, supply with the information. It is a safe and secure uh, method in communicating information. As we often say, if you see something, say something. That's right. You know, it's very refreshing to know, as you said, that at least two of the murders have been solved. Because, as you said, one life loss is mm -hmm. one too many. Yes, certainly. You know, so we really want to 
join with this, this Trinidad and Tobago Police Service in the fight against crime. If you see something, say something. But I want to touch a little bit on the larceny part. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you said sometimes you leave your brush cutter in the yard, your little tools or whatever in your yard. And it's in your property. Sometimes you have a fence, you have a gate and all these things. Mm -hmm. And still they find a way mm -hmm. into your property. I remember in the past there was a report where a, a, a person, a homeowner, a property owner, you know, they made their own homemade little kind of security kind of type mm -hmm. thing that when any illegal person, any illegal entry into their property, they cause some damage. Mm -hmm. And to me, I find it kind of unfair that the property owner would be charged. So tell me a little bit on how, <laughs> um, aside from the cameras and whatever, because not everybody could afford cameras, right? Not everybody into the technology thing. You need to, we need to find other ways to safeguard our property. And people try their best. They try to make their own little things. How can we do this? All right, so... Let me see if I can identify mm -hmm. some of the some of the, the the things that you can do as relates to safeguarding your property. I am going to touch on the I, I remember an incident of which you re referred to in that instance the person hand was chopped off. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and that, that was causing a little stir. Right? However, all right, so what, what some of the some of the things that we can do as relates to securing our property? Obviously we have the CCTV cameras. No, they are cheap. CCTV camera systems that you can use. Uh, I believe that the government would have taken off the duties on, on cameras and certain electrical safety devices, so it might be a little more affordable. So we have that which, we, which, which I would still say is somewhat reactive because sometimes you may not catch the person in the act. However, having reviewed the CCT, CCTV footage, that is when you would identify. So that is one mechanism, lighting. Lighting is a very significant aspect because a lot of persons operate in the dark. So if you're a property, and, and we're not only talking about home, we're talking about business, commercial, commercial arenas, lighting goes a long way. So you can use either floodlights, motion detector lights, and those things are, are quite reasonable and affordable. And it, especially if you're a businessman, you don't want to make all the money and you want to spend no money for security, right? So we have that. Um, investing in a dog or in dogs mm. goes a long way, right? Um, fencing your place, using proper fencing. Um, not everybody might be able to build a 20-foot wall or 20-feet wall rather, but you can use walls and fencing to, to at least keep people out because it means that they still have to jump over. Um, in there is... There is still no justification, even though your property is on fence. None, none for whatsoever. For someone to enter, especially to commit a, an offense, right? Um, some persons may make um, homemade traps <laughs> yes. and and end up in uh, trouble. Well, we, we, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of, at the end of the day, um, you you need to take whatever steps to to protect your property. Um, some persons also also. Because if you're a business person or if you think that you're you, you a life energy, you can apply for a few or a user's license. So these are some of the mechanisms. And persons, some persons may shy away from some of these things, but what we have available to us, let us use them because we need to protect ourselves. We need to become hard, a hard target. Um, the, 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 the aspect of the type of windows you use. Mm -hmm. Many persons here, they may move away from, yes, louvers. However... Some of the windows that they have, them sliding window, if you push it, it come off the truck and you're inside somebody else. So, you're, so now you are, you are forced now to, to, to reinforce your windows with burglar, burglar proofing. proofing yes. right? So we, we have to, you have to be practical. You have to be practical in what you're doing. And let us not take it for granted that the old Tobago still exists. We still have the, the elements of, or the unexpected elements of crime. And that is some of the things that we need to treat with. I know it's very unfortunate that property owners have to take these stringent mm -hmm. measures to protect their property. But you have to do what you have to do, right? And I think we need to come back to community as well. You know, you look out for each other, you be your brother's keeper. Viewers, we are going to take a break, but we are coming back with our sergeant as we continue our discussion on safety and the roles and responsibilities of the police and the you know, the citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. So don't forget to share the live, share the live, share the live. I am Adana Kombi and we will be right back. Welcome back. 
Welcome back, viewers, and thank you for staying with us. So this is GMT. I am Madonna Combi. I am your host, and we continue the conversation with Sergeant Joseph Jordan. And we are talking about the responsibility, the powers, rather, of a police officer. What powers? We started a discussion before, and we just want to continue on the powers, the authority. What can a police officer do? What can they not do? What are the things that are allowed? So just educate us a little bit on these powers. All right. So as we're saying, we're continuing from last week. So we're looking at that part two. And I, I want us to take a slight twist in that in relation to that response. But one of the things you talk about, what the police can do and what the police cannot do, if one of the things we're not, we are not to abuse our powers. Correct. Right? right. So I want, I want to start there. And... Our, our, our powers are guided within the Constitution, whether it be the Police Service Act 1501, whether it be the Summary Court, the Summary Court Act. The Constitution of Trinidad and Tobago guides each and every one of us, and that is the armpit in which the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service operates within. Now, an example, I mean, let me use one of, our, one of our typical traffic examples where sometimes a lot of people tend to, you know, we often hear about these offenses. So you, you are doing your traffic duty as a police officer, you engage a driver or, or the, somebody, and sometimes even passengers mm -hmm. in the said vehicle, and there is a, you may ask for their driver's permit and their insurance, or you may ask or ask them about certain items on their car and these things, and sometimes we end up in an argument. Now, those might have been simple, simple ticketable offenses, fixed penalty notice that can be administered to the, the driver or even the passenger. And at the end of the day, or at the end of that scenario, we end up with charges of resisting arrest, <laughs> obscene language, law, escaping lawful custody, and, and these things. And these, this is how this, these things happen when there is a poor level of communication, and sometimes people misrepresent what takes what happens. Now we have the authority to stop that vehicle, whether we're stopping it for the for, and, and searching as relates to firearms illegal firearms, as well under the Predial Larceny Act. Right? Those, are the, those are two of the main authorities that gives us the authority to stop and search a vehicle, as well as the occupants. Now, many of the times, persons would ask, sometimes ask, well, so what are you stopping me for? Why are you harassing me? Why are you going to look for the, 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 the real criminal? But I would often say this, our trivial or small offenses are to be dealt with. If not, we move to the more serious ones, such as the serious report crimes, the chopping, the shooting, the murders. And this is where our society needs to come together, band together, and appreciate that the little thing that you do today may escalate into something in the future. So I started there. So I want to go... Here now. <laughs> well, before you go here, yeah. you stick up in, right? right? Early in the conversation, you said a police officer could pull over a driver, um, search the driver and the occupants, ask for their insurance, license, and they end up in an argument, which is a ticketable offense? No, 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 no. Oh. Right. No, I was making the point mm -hmm. where... It could escalate. You, they might have identified an offense on the vehicle. Let me right. say you're driving okay. with, with, um, with one headlight. Right. Mm -hmm. So you would have stopped the person. Okay. So, so you have reasonable cause. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, what if I argue with a police officer? No, no, no. Right, no, okay, no, good. We no. clear that up. As a ma all right, let me go. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. if there is some sort of breach by the, 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 the driver and the person, yes, they can be arrested. Okay. And taken to the station Understood. and be charged, right? But uh, as I was, uh, the point I was making is that you, st you would have been stopped for an offense that is ticketable. Good, that okay, good. Today, okay, good. Right? <laughs> So, so, um, so last week, uh, I think one of the your callers or, or, or tweeters would have asked about citizens' arrests, and it is an area that a lot of people 
often ask about and they want to know how it operates. So I will permit me, I will look at, we have the Criminal Law Act, Chapter 1004, right? Under that act, and we're looking at Section 3 in particular, I will read, any person may arrest without warrant anyone who is or whom he, with reasonable cause, suspects to be in the act of committing an arrestable offense. So that is section 3.2. I will look at section 3.3 three of that said act. Where an arrestable offense has been committed, any person may arrest without warrant anyone who is or whom he with reasonable cause suspect of being guilty of the offense. Right. You're looking interesting. Uh, very interesting because uh, <laughs> very interesting. Right. No. We're talking about the powers of the police and we're talking about powers of the citizen. The, the citizen. No. Further down, we talk they talk about the police, but not to confuse the public and to confuse us. No, we say any person. Now we slowly break it up. Any person means me being a police officer, or you me being, being a civilian. civilian. Mm -hmm. Right? And we arrest without warrant. Without warrant means if there is no there is no need for due process in order to get instructions to arrest a person. And an arrestable offense is for um, serious crimes, crimes that are, are punishable by a sentence of no less than five years. Serious offenses. Mm -hmm. So if you my horse <laughs> see another guy running down the road with a cutlass he's bloody and you cast your eye further up the street and you saw a man on the ground bleeding you can arrest the man with the cutlass you can. no <laughs> right and, and this is where the, and this is where and this is where it becomes interesting no Citizens arrest is usually, there are people usually operate in groups. Yes. Mm -hmm. for, for your own safety. True. Mm -hmm. Right? And I, I just use the extremity, because the average person not going to stop no man running down the road with no cutlass. Correct. But it gives you the authority to detain that person by whatever means, even if it means with the assistance of others, and bring that person to the police or keep that person there until, until the, the police, police come. Yeah. Right? So if an arrest and an offense would have taken place, this, the average citizen can intervene. And we've seen this happen before in Trinidad and, and right, in Tobago, even in we, our communities, we've seen that happen before. And that is and the, the loose term, that is where we that is where we call the citizen arrest. But that that authority is given. This is under the law of trying to be under section ten zero four of the criminal law act that gives both the police and civilians that ability to detain someone, yeah. right? And, when we, and as I said, without warrant, that, that there is no due process, there is no legal proceedings or investigation as yet, but an offense would have been committed and, we, and we're talking about the proximity of the event, of the event right? So you, you are able to sus reasonably suspect that that man or that person committed this offense. So this is what, when we, this is where we speak about citizens' arrest and is something that person should be cognizant of. Understood. So likewise, the police, yes, we have our powers. The civilian, the general public, they also have similar powers. Just that our powers might be, a, we are a little more greater and guided by, by yes. the by our stand um, proceedings. Policies, correct. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so that silly bewilderness came off your face. Yes. So you appreciate <laughs> now as it relates to the powers of a civilian, likewise the powers of the of, of, a, of a police officer. And I, I would often encourage persons, sometimes we may, we need to look at these things. I know I am not as such a social media fanatic. However, but a lot of us sometimes we are on the social media saying things and promoting things mm -hmm. that are incor incorrect. And it is important that you, you look at our laws because, the, because what we need to appreciate is that what we do in Trinidad and Tobago, we have rights and we have a constitution 
that guides everything. It supersedes all Lord. It is it is the it is the the foundation on 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 and prince on on the principles under which we are governed. Right. Not even the government can interfere with the constitution without due process. So we need to be mindful as to what is available to us and use it to our benefits. Right, so we, we, we learned about the citizens, citizens' arrest. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more as we have the last couple of minutes mm -hmm. before we wind down. Um, police, police powers. Tell me a little bit like, okay, for instance, you, you get some information, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you have your little sources or whatever, right. you have that information. A drug man living there, mm -hmm. right? Could you just turn up to the place, knock the door in, kick in the door, go in and say, I'm arresting you today? How does that work? Not, not, not in that simple process. Now, if there is information of a house, a person selling drugs, we will need to get, do some diligent checks, do some background inquiries, gather some information. And upon that information, we will now get a warrant. We will get a warrant, and that is the authority in which we will use to enter the premises, whether by force oh, or other voluntarily. means. Voluntarily, good. All right? right? So that is where we are. Right. Listen, I have been educated today. I have a greater understanding and appreciation for the operations of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and also my responsibility as a civilian. Yeah. And as I said, the important thing really is if we want to keep the crime down or whatever, we really have to be our brother's keeper. Yeah, certainly. Um, of course, you have to be honorable citizens <laughs> as well. You have to be yeah. an honest person and yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm in but, community. you know, just knowing that you have the support of somebody, you have somebody, Who's you're going away for a weekend and somebody casting an eye on your property or somebody could give you a call and say, listen, I see somebody come in your yard, whether somebody come to water your plants, you know, stuff like that. So let us continue to be our brother's keeper. As the sergeant said also, let us get familiar with the laws, the constitution that guides criminal activities and our responsibility as civilians in Trinidad and Tobago as we work together to achieve um, reduce crime and offenses in Trinidad and Tobago, specifically in Tobago and in our communities for the safety of our families and our children. Um, this is where we take a break and we want to say thank you, Sergeant, so much for being here with us. We love having you here thank, and the information that we get. Thank you Thanks for having me. Right. So we are going to go to a break and while we go to this break, we're going to encourage you, of course, to share the live, share the live, share the live. We'll be back. Wake up with Candace and Denise.